Hi guys, Sergeant Ice T here, and welcome to my review of Dead Rally. Dead Rally released into early access last year in April, and the finished product, so the version 1.0, was released in December. And it will actually be coming out on the 5th of April for the concert. As all Dead Rally is a spin off of the Dirt series, it's not trying to be the same as before. But instead it's trying to be a rally simulator, so you won't find any Gymkhana or Red Bull or Dubstep in it. If you're searching for that, don't buy it. Okay, let's go over some technical things. I have a GTX 970 and I'm able to run it in 144p with 60fps in ultra settings. The only thing that could be improved are the loading times. Although I have the game on SSD, it really takes quite long to load the levels. Let's talk over the graphics. Now, I think this game looks really well and I really like it. It has a lot of detail even besides the road and there are small things which make it even better. One thing I noticed especially is skid marks on the roads and even on the grass beside the roads if you're sliding off into the tree or something like that. And you can knock over bushes. Another thing I noticed is there are different things that are splashing up from your tires. So if you're running over some rocks they will be splashing from there. And if you're running through water or something like that it will completely look different. Another thing I really like about this game is that the cars actually get dirty. I notice this especially in Wales and Greece, because in Greece you get some dust all over the car, and this even happens to your front window, so you will actually see less at the end of the track, and in Wales the whole car gets muddy. I think this looks really nice. Another thing I actually noticed is, especially in Greece, when you're going up a U-turn and you're turning, on the way back out of the U-turn you can actually see the dust cloud which comes from your way into the corner. I think these are small details which really make the game look good. Okay, let's talk over audio. Now I think this game sounds awesome and here are some things I noticed in particular. There are different effects for different ground surfaces. You get a sound from sliding, you get a braking sound so your brakes squeak every time you use them. You get different tire sounds for different surfaces, so you can actually hear your tire roll on the asphalt if you want to. Sometimes when you're going over a jump or something like that, you actually hear the car's suspension working, which is small details which are fantastic in my opinion. And of course you can hear the tire popping, which is good to know, but normally your co-driver will tell you. One thing which really adds to the immersion in my opinion is like the rocks that are coming from your tires that are hitting your car. You can actually hear those. Let's talk about the car sounds. So the cars all sound different, which is really nice. It's not like a generic noise, which is slightly different for all the cars, but they are actually recordings of real cars. A lot of them sound really awesome, though. There are things like the Ibiza kit car, which, in my opinion, don't really sound good, but I mean, it doesn't sound good in real life, so it's just the way it sounds in real life. What I also really like about the car sounds is that you actually get different sounds for the different cameras. So when you're inside the cockpit, you actually get a different sound than from the outside camera. This is really good and I think it really adds to the immersion as well. Okay, let's quickly talk over the cold driver now. The cold driver actually reacts to things that are happening. So he tells you when your tire is plopping or something like that. And normally he also reacts to things like jumps. So when you're going over a jump, he stops talking and things like that. These are small things which are implemented in this game that are really making it quite immersive actually. One thing you should know about the co-driver is when you're actually not playing in English he gets a different voice, I mean it's clear, but the problem with the different voice is there are not as much details as in English. So I noticed this in particular at the beginning phase of the game where I played it in German and then I switched to English and in English there are actually a lot more details in the voices and he actually tells you a lot more. So just test it with the language, but don't be disappointed if he's actually telling you less things in your language than in English. One word to the music. The music is only in the menu and it's nothing special, so it's not really necessary, but it's there. Okay, let's talk about what the game has to offer. Now when you first open up the main menu, you get to choose between your career mode, your leagues and your custom event. In your custom event, you can drive every stage with every car and every game mode. You can also create full events with different locations. Leagues are basically the same as custom events, but you can create them online and race against your friends. Now this game has to offer three game modes, which are Rally, Rally Cross and Hill Climb. In Rally, you get six locations with over 70 stages. These six locations are Wales, Finland, Monaco, Greece, Germany and Sweden. And a quick side note here. 
All the tracks are actually inspired from real life tracks, so they are not generic tracks like in Dirt 3, but they are actually real rally tracks. Let's go over to Rallycross. Now in Rallycross you get three locations. You get England, Norway and Sweden. That rally actually acquired the official FIA license, so we may actually see more of them coming later in a DLC or something like that, but until now there's no DLC announced. The last game mode is Hill Climb and we unfortunately get only one location there, which is Pikes Peak, where we can only choose between full street or mixed terrain. Let's talk about the cars the game has to offer. Overall, this game has 39 cars, from which being 30 in Rally, 3 in Hill Climb and 6 in Rallycross. But when the console version will come out in two days, there will actually be more cars coming into the game. So let's go over to Korea. You get to choose between your career mode, online events, and online multiplayer. The online events are daily, weekly and monthly events on different tracks with different cars and some of them require the ownership of the car to actually do them. Another event type is the wager event where you get to bet your money and you can either win or lose some. Ok, let's talk about the career mode. In the career mode you start off with a 60s car and the lowest difficulty. Every time you win a championship you win some money but you also advance in the difficulty. If the difficulty gets higher, there are also more stages per location. The problem is, in the career mode, you have only one car per location, so every two stages you can repair your car, but there's a time limit. If it takes too long to repair your car, you have to drive with a damaged car, so you want to make sure that you don't damage it too much, because it can be really annoying if you have to drive a night stage, but you've damaged your lights in the stage before and you can't see anything. Now this is another thing this game has to offer because there's a day-night system and also a weather system and there are multiple conditions for the location. To be able to repair your car quicker, you can hire people for your team in the team management section. You can use perks to unlock upgrades for your cars faster. And advancing through the upgrade system, you can also unlock the advanced setup. Now this game offers an in-depth car setup, which actually features a lot of settings, but I haven't digged into that too deep, so I can't tell you too much about that. But you can actually share profiles through Steam Workshop, and maybe they will implement something similar for the consoles, I don't know yet. But this is actually helpful, so if you're on PC, go into the Steam Workshop and download some profiles. I'd recommend some from Porkhammer, as he's really a good guy and creates really good profiles. Also this game features in-game leaderboards for every stage and every car class. So after you've driven some stage you can actually compare yourself online to all the other people that have driven it before. Let's talk about gameplay slash physics. Overall this game really handles like a simulation. Every car has a different handling and you can feel the weight and the power of the car. Every ground surface feels differently and the weather affects handling and vision drastically. For example, if you get the Ibiza kit car and you drive on snow, it can feel like you can't steer anymore because it is so light that you actually can't get any grip on your front wheels. The cars are getting realistic damage, which isn't only visual. If you hit something with the front of your car, you can damage your radiator. And if you lose a wheel, then you can probably restart the track. Keep that in mind. Okay, one thing I want to point out here is that the force feedback of the game is actually really amazing. I've played this game for 50 hours I think with a racing wheel and I really love it so you can really feel every little bump in the track and something like that. If you have a racing wheel, by the way, this game is a no brainer go buy it now. But even with a controller it's more than playable, you don't get the feedback from the vibrations because your controller just can't do it, but it still handles really good and you can actually get quite good times with it. One thing I really like is that there are no rewinds. so. You can't just like hit a tree, rewind and do the corner again, but you have to restart the whole ways. But if you do so, you will actually lose money, which is considered a bonus money for not restarting too much. Let's come to a conclusion here. If you are searching for an arcade game, then this is not for you. But if you have a racing wheel, or you're even remotely interested in sim racing or rallying, then go out and buy this game. It's really awesome and I can't recommend it enough. In my opinion it's the best game of the year and it may even be on the top list of racing games of all time. Ok guys, thanks for watching. Please leave a like and share the video if it helped. And if something is missing or you have another question, just leave me a comment and I will answer it as soon as possible.